What's up, everybody? It's Coach Sharf. Welcome back to my note videos for Algebra 2. And today we are looking at graphing polynomials, anything larger than the quadratic, so cubic functions, quartic functions, and quintic functions, primarily, which, of course, is what we've been working on. So I've got a few notes. We'll go through it relatively quickly. Y'all can pause at each screen to write everything down in your notebook if you don't have them. So the thing I want to point out to y'all is I'm going to have another video where I do a couple examples from our homework. And you'll see when we get to the homework, we're identifying these characteristics. And we pretty much identified all these already back when we did the graphing quadratics. So intercepts, domain and range, things like that. The notes highlight a few of the, the differences and tweaks in what we're looking for with polynomials versus what we're looking for with quadratics. So we're really gonna focus on these things, but you know, domain, you should know how to find domain regardless of whatever graph I give you, range, things like that. So let's pull up our notes in active board. You know, we got graphing polynomials. So if you didn't get this down, we did in class. And the last thing you got from class was the packet, the, the factor and polynomials packet. You can kind of flip to your next page. You can kind of make this your, your title at the top of the page. And then we'll just kind of, you know, go on down. Hopefully it should only, you know, take up one page front and back, possibly maybe two, so no, not too, too bad. All right, so as I said, all of our characteristics of our graphs that we found for quadratics can also be applied to larger polynomials. Like I just said, so, you know, let's, let's kind of name everything that we're eventually going to be looking for. So domain and range, again, that's the same. X-intercepts, Y-intercepts, those are the same. Intervals of increase or decrease, increasing, decreasing intervals, however you want to say it. Um, we're just going to have more of those than we did with quadratics. And behavior, you know, the, with the, the quadratics, with the parabolas, either, you know, both ends, or I'm trying to make it a little more rounded so it looks like a parabola. Let me square it up. Either both ends are going up or both ends are going down. Um, but that's not always going to be the case. Now we can have it, you know, where one end is going up and the other end is going down or kind of flipped, which we'll get to that in a second. And then there's also a characteristic that looks for symmetry in our graphs, but you can also find this characteristic by looking at the functions. And again, we'll get to that in a minute. So again, get this down. Pause the video now if you need to. Once you're done, you can unpause and... Go to the next, and keep playing while I go to the next slide. All right. So as I said, a few characteristics are slightly different with the larger polynomials when compared to quadratics. So that's what we're getting ready to look at now. So again, I'll pause in real time for a couple seconds. You can pause the video and write this down and we'll move on to the next slide. All right. So first thing we we'll start with is end behavior. So as I just said, you know, with the, the regular parabolas, either both ends were going up, both ends were going down. So it's pretty simple. But now, you know, we've got, you can either have, depending on the shape of your graph, you have one end going up, one end going down, or vice versa. I'm trying to kind of make it look like a graph. You all see when I, I pull the slide up in a second. So it's four possible combinations of end behavior. They're determined by the degree of our polynomial, so whatever our highest exponent is, and the sign on the leading coefficient, if the leading coefficient is positive or negative. So I'm going to pause this to get this written down, and then you can move on to the next slide. All right. So... For our end behavior, again, you got these four ones, 
there's four combinations. You have the left end going down, right end going up, flipped, left end is going up, right end is going down. Both ends are going up. You see it's got this little extra hump in the middle, but it still looks pretty close to a parabola. Both ends are going up here, both ends are going down. So when we have an odd degree, so our highest exponent is an odd number. So X to the third, X to the fifth, anything like that. This would be a cubic graph. You can tell because it crosses the X axis three times. So when our highest exponent is odd and our leading coefficient is positive, then our graph is going to look something like this. It says, first of all, to read it again, we went over this a little bit with the end behavior with the quadratics, but it says that the expression x arrow plus infinity is read as x approaches positive infinity. So if you look, it says f of x, which is my function, okay? Again, guys, the, the blue line represents our function. It's all values when I plug in x to whatever my polynomial is, x cubed, minus 2x squared, whatever, whatever, whatever. Whatever values I plug in for x and I calculate and get y, it's all those points. Again, it's an infinite number of points because I could use, you know, 1. I could use 1.5. I could use 1.51. I could use 1.513. 1.5131. 1 1.513.14, whatever. It's whatever number of points. And then I calculate their Y values and they would all be connected by the blue line. So again, the blue line really represents my function. So the values of my function, and when we talk about the values of our function, again, that is the actual Y value. So, you know, if I had this point right here, whatever the Y value is at that point, would be the value of my function at that point. So the value of my function approaches negative infinity because it's going down to negative infinity y as my x values approach negative infinity because this end of my graph is going down, but it's also going slightly to the left. So when I did these examples in class, and y'all see on the next video, I kind of flipped it. I said, I prefer to say it as x approaches negative infinity because you're talking about your left and right sides. So as x approaches negative infinity, f of x also approaches negative infinity. So I prefer to flip it. And, you know, I haven't made the test yet, so I know how it's going to be on the test, but either way you see it, you see it, you should be able to, you know, should be able to decipher it. The other thing I'm going to say is if you're more comfortable with thinking of these as your y values, you know, if you want to write y instead of f of x now, that's fine. But again, on a test situation, it's probably going to be f of x. So we, we know f of x and y are interchangeable, so you just need to keep that in mind. Um, so then as the left end is going towards negative infinity x, my graph, my function is going down towards negative infinity y. Here, as my right end goes to positive infinity x, so now as it's going right to positive infinity x, it's also going up to positive infinity y. All right, over here it's flipped. So now my left end as it goes left to negative infinity x is going up to positive infinity y. Here my right end as it goes right is going down to negative infinity. Both ends are going up. Left end to, to negative infinity x, right end to positive infinity x are both going up to positive infinity y. And here both ends are going down to negative infinity. So again, I'll pause this, let you go ahead and finish getting this, or you can pause it. I'll pause briefly. You pause it once you got it done, you can hit play and keep going. All right, even and odd function. So these kind of tie into our degree being even or odd, but there's, there's extra qualifiers with these. Even and odd functions. So when you say even or odd function, again, they're, they're specific qualifiers. It's not just that, as I just said, your degree is your highest exponent is even or odd. 
that mean that your number of terms is even or odd. So you got, you know, five terms in your function or six terms in your function. Doesn't mean, you know, every time you calculate a value, so every time you plug in X and get a Y, your Y value is even or your Y value is odd. I, I honestly don't even know how you would get that. The even, I guess, any answer you get, you would multiply by two, ultimately. So you have your entire function and parentheses around your entire function with the two multiplying it on the outside. I don't even know about uh, odd. Anyway, it's not that. Not the point. All right. So to qualify as an even function, your function must contain only terms with variables with even exponents and constants. So at any, all your terms have to have the X with the even power. You can also have the one constant on here. They are symmetrical about the Y axis, which we'll look at in a minute. So my example is X to the fourth minus five X squared plus four. When you get to the, the video for the homework, we actually are gonna look at this graph and on your actual homework, again, this is the one function I added. So you got eight functions for the homework, the seven from the packet. So 5A, 5B, 5C, 6A, 6B, 6C, 6D. And then I added this one in to give you eight total functions on your homework. So I have X to the fourth, which is variable with the even exponent, negative five X squared, variable with the even exponent, four is my constant. So, you know, you don't have to count all, all the way down. You know, if I started with, you know, X to the six, I could just have X to the six minus four. I don't, you know, I don't have X to the fourth and X squared there. It doesn't matter. I could have negative 10 X to the 32nd power plus five X to the 14th. Okay, I don't have X to the 30th, X to the 28th x to the 26, x to the 24, wow, whatever, 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 yada, yada, yada. My terms all have to either have exponents or variables, excuse me, with even exponents or be a constant. Yeah. Uh, pause this if you need to, to finish getting it and then you can move on to the next slide. All right, next slide. Odd functions then can only contain terms with variables with odd exponents. I do not have this in here, but odd functions cannot have a constant. Only even functions can have a constant. They are symmetrical about the origin. Again, our example is three X cubed minus nine X. I could have negative five X to the 101st power plus four X to the 57th. Variable with odd exponent, variable with odd exponent. That's all I'm worried about. They're symmetrical about the origin, which again, we'll talk about in a second. So again, pause this to get it down. What you do, you can unpause and move on. All right. So here's our freeze frame from our book again, our snippet from our book. You know, I have to write this part, okay? About the even and odd functions. Um, you can just draw even function the graph, an odd function, its graph, you can write what's underneath it. So with the even function, you can kind of think of it as a reflection. So it's, you know, both sides look like a reflection of themselves over the y axis. Okay. So with that, what this is trying to illustrate is any point you have. So we'll say that this is, I hate it does that. We'll say that this is four, negative two. You're gonna have a point, another point at negative two. And then this is four units away from the y-axis and so is this one, but it's going negative. So it'll be negative four, okay? For your odd function, 
the best way to think about this is a 180 degree rotation about the origin. So if you take your graph, if you actually had it on a sheet of paper and flipped it upside down, or you know, maybe if you had your computer screen and flipped it upside down, it would look the same. The, the best things to kind of be able to identify these are to look at any turning points you may have. So whatever this turning point is, whatever this turning point is, keeps doing that, I don't like that. You know, whatever your X and Y numbers are here, these are gonna have the opposite signs. If your graph kind of went the opposite way, it would still be the same thing. You know, this would be positive X, negative Y. And then this would be, I'd flip my sign. So this would be negative X, positive Y. So those would have, you know, both of your coordinates there again, would have the opposite signs. My eraser would switch for me. Guess I shouldn't have drawn the arrow through my 180 degree rotation. I'm going to go back and rewrite that real quick. So 180 degree rotation about the origin. The other thing is, again, it has to go through the origin. So again, with cubic function, with your other two zeros, it's the same idea with these about switching the signs on both, but our Y value is zero since it's on the X axis. So, you know, if this is six zero, I can't switch the sign on zero, it'd still be zero, but I could switch the sign on six to be negative six zero. So your, you know, if you had a cubic function, one year zeros has to go through the origin because a uh, function with odd, if it's an odd function with that odd symmetry, it has to go through the origin to rotate around it. Your other two zeros should be like this, have the you know the opposite signs for your x. Okay. You know, give y'all a second to finish getting that. All right. On the next slide. Turning points and relative and absolute maximums and minimums. So I don't have it pulled up and I'm not gonna stop pull it up here, but if y'all were to look back or to remember the vocab PowerPoint we did all the way back at the beginning of the year, you know, we focused on a few terms um, that we're gonna use throughout, mostly about like binomial and polynomial and cubic and quartic and quintic, but a majority of the vocab was dealing with graphing because as I've, I haven't said it as much lately, but as I've kind of told you all year, almost everything we do with graph, okay? We didn't have any graphing really in unit two, but you know, we graph the quadratics in unit one, we're graphing right now, everything until the last unit uh, this year from here on out, is we're gonna graph. So a lot of graphing. So in that vocab uh, PowerPoint and on the, the sheet, if you print out the sheet or just wrote it down yourself, we had vertex, which again is, is the single point, you know, at the bottom. So right here, the bottom or at the top of your parabola. So I don't just have that single point with these graphs now. Okay, there's multiple points where it kind of, you know, looks like the graph comes to, a, you know, a point, if you will. We call them turning points because, you know, usually the graph is going up and then starts going down or it's going down and then turns and goes up. And, you know, when we're talking about the quadratics, when it's just the vertex, you know, the vertex is either my absolute lowest point or my absolute highest point. So we just said the vertex is either the minimum or maximum. So we're still gonna reference the turning points as minimums or maximums but they could be relative or absolute, which we'll get to shortly. All right, 
So as I was just saying, grass at large polynomials do not have a single vertex like a parabola, or rather they have multiple turning points. Again, pause to get this down. Once you have it written down, you can unpause and keep going. All right. Number of turning points is usually one fewer than the degree of the polynomial. I'm saying usually it's not the case 100% of the time, but usually. So if you have a cubic function, x to the third power is your highest, x to the third is your highest variable with your highest exponent, you have two turning points. And not 100% of the time, 100, not the case 100% of the time, but usually. And then also, as I was saying, similar to a vertex, the turning points are also minimum or maximal points, but are now relative or absolute. And you have to look at your graph to be able to determine that. So again, pause to get this down. And when you got it down, get on pause and keep going. All right. So again, here's a little snippet from the book. Let me kind of move my picture out of the way a little bit. Let me, there we go. So with the graph we have now, okay, first thing for y'all to kind of realize is they call it local maximum and minimum in the book. This is anything I prefer relative though. So anywhere there was local, I crossed down for relative. So the Y coordinate of a turning point is a local maximum. So this one of the function when the point is higher than all nearby points. We can see this is the highest point of anything kind of near it. There are higher points over here, but again, this end, this end is added, or the, it's on the end is going up to positive infinity. These can't be maximum, actual maximum values because I can just keep going and going and going and going with infinity. I never actually hit a true maximum value because I just keep going. So then my minimums, same thing. Uh, um, relative minimum down here. All these points are lower, but they're just going to drop now. Let me let Miss Jones in real quick because I was trying to figure out how to pause this video. So let me let her in real quick. Let her know what's going on, and then I'll finish this video, guys. Are you gonna meet no, because nobody else is here. Oh. Hey. Hey. Um. I guess I should have sent out an email. Uh, Wahid left and Brittany wasn't here, so we were just going to postpone till Wednesday. Okay. And I'm just, uh, you actually caught me. I'm making one of my videos to put on YouTube, so. Oh. You're, uh, you're, 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 you're not one of the kids, so I, I think I can uh, include you in it, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I won't be here Wednesday because I have a conference. Um, okay. Like 3.45, but I will check in with you all to see if you need anything. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, appreciate it, Ms. Jones. Bye. All right, bye. All right, and that is uh, Ms. Jones, everybody. So let's go back and finish up now. Um, so we're talking about the relative minimum. Again, these points are lower than that one, but they're on the section that's heading down towards negative infinity. So it is a relative minimum. And when I ask, when we are graphing, the characteristics I'm gonna ask for are gonna be your turning points. So I'm gonna abbreviate TP. And then you're gonna say your relative max. And I want you to write the ordered pair, not just whatever your Y value is. So write your ordered pair, and then the same with your minimum. You can write the word repair. Uh, the one thing I want to say about that is we talk about relative maximum, but you also have absolute. So sketching a couple of things here for you real quick. All right. So with the absolute, it's either going to be with, a, um, it's probably going to be the fu uh, function with a even degree. So if I look at this function, I have this point which would be a relative max. I'm going to put R max. I have two points that look like they could be minimums. Though. Okay, this one and this one. This one would be a relative minimum because, again, it's lower than any points around it, 
but there's points over here that go lower. This is gonna be my absolute minimum. So this is the absolute lowest point. No part of my graph goes lower than that. So that would be my absolute minimum. So you're only gonna have one or the other because both my ends go up. So I can't have an absolute maximum on my highest point. So you know, I'm either just gonna have an absolute minimum or an absolute maximum. You know, so if I have an absolute minimum, any maximums I have would be relative maximums. Most of the time, any other minimum would be a relative minimum. But you can have occasionally a case, and I'm going to flip this upside down so y'all can see. I'm trying to draw it as close to perfect as I can. Okay, I have it flipped upside down now. So this is a relative minimum. But the idea of both of these is to be the exact same. So both of these go up the exact same amount. So both of these would be an absolute max, all right? Absolute max for both of them because it's the highest and I wouldn't have a relative minimum. So you can have more if they happen to go to the exact same, you know, height or depth, if you will. They're both gonna be absolute maximum or absolute minimum points, but I can't have an absolute minimum and an absolute maximum. It's just, you know, one or the other. So, the other thing our turning points do is help us to determine the, where the function is increasing or decreasing in those intervals, which I have circled there in red. So and when we're talking about the increasing and decreasing intervals, it's where the graph is you know, going up and going down. We look at it in terms of our X values. So from negative infinity X to positive infinity X, and I read the graph that way from left to right. So as I'm coming left, you know, it doesn't matter where I hit this graph. As I'm coming left, as soon as I hit the graph, I'm gonna start tracing it and it's going up. So my function is increasing in this part. All right, so let me kind of erase this so I can clean it up a little bit. That arrow is, I was trying to draw that arrow there, but it should just wind up underlining, increasing anyway. So my function is increasing for this section. So it's increasing from negative infinity X to right here, then it turns and goes down over this little section. So it says function is decreasing for this section. So it's decreasing from here to here. And then it turns back and goes positive, increasing from here all the way up. That's not green. From there to there. So those are my increasing and decreasing intervals for that. Um, again, if you're looking at, you know, if you're looking at something like this, you know, this is decreasing here and it's increasing, then it's decreasing and then it's increasing. So usually your total number of intervals is actually going to match your degree. So, you know, if I have a cubic function, there's three intervals. If I have a quartic function, there's four intervals. And then you just got to, you know, figure out, you know, how many are increasing, how many are decreasing and your actual bounds for your for your your x values that bound you know each interval as you're going from negative infinity x to positive infinity x all right so that's it on notes let me stop sharing the screen that's it on notes and so you can now go look at the next video where i do a couple examples with this again make sure that you got the, the homework sheet up and ready to go so you can kind of follow along with that and y'all can just switch over to that and get into that. So I'll see y'all in that video. I'll see you then.